Welcome to the North Gate. I'm Aitan Zakaias, and this is the channel for truth. Here, you will be learning about the Bible, the Bible in its uncut form, raw, gritty, and with no filter. So if your heart pumps Kool-Aid, this ain't the channel for you. All praises to Yahweh, Baha Shem, HaMashiach, Yahweh Shah. Shabbat Shalom, Israel. The Kuhnism of our people surrounding politics are at an all time high. I constantly feel embarrassed every time I turn on the television or any social media app at how many of our people are still bootlickers. There has been 44 different heathen presidents and not one of them have been an Israelite. Barack was mixed and mixed isn't black. And not only was he mixed, but he was a mix between Esau and Ham. And we know that Ham and Esau worked hand in hand to pull us out of the west coast of Africa and into slavery in the North Americas. 44 different presidents and none of them have been one of our people. But yet, we still got our people believing there is no racism, shucking and jiving on the 4th of July when our people would get their backs beat in in 1776. Wearing these idiot hats saying make America great again. Can you just imagine how stupid we look in the eyes of Yahweh the Father? Imagine how mad Habashiak is. Negroes on television going to bat for Trump and Edomite they never met. I mean, it's madness on every level. 44 different presidents and nothing has changed for our people. The chains came off your hands and feet just to put them more tightly and securely on your minds. 44 different presidents and we're still marching. We're still protesting. And to be honest, I'm just tired of looking at our people begging and looking stupid over something they'll never receive from these heathen. Politics in America are not for you, Israel. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to start at chapter 17 and we're going to start at verse 14. These are the prerequisites for the times that you are to vote. Verse 14. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt possess it. First of all, we have to be in our land in order to vote. We have no business voting for a heathen in the land of the heathens. I'm gonna start over. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. So the Lord will be choosing our king. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set a king over thee. So if we were to vote, we cannot be voting on a heathen. It would have to be one of our brothers. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. This is plain, this is plain and in clear English. All these coons, bunch of mamas, Uncle Ben's that are out there voting, then you're a complete sin, folly, idiocy. 16, but he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord has said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. All these heathen presidents, all they do is heap riches unto the United States. That's what they do. They heap riches unto themselves, right? This is nothing according to the scriptures that our people should be involved in. Politics is not for you, Israel. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book of that which is before the priest of the Levites, and it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, and to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. So not only that, he has to write the law, the Levitical law. Not one of these 44 heathen presidents have ever sitting down and written out the Levitical law because they're heathens, and followed it all the days of their life. 20. That his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, 
to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. Now, Israel, we're not home. We're not in the land of Israel. We are in the land of our captivity. So to be voting for the descendants of our captors is absolute folly, the pinnacle of ignorance. We gotta get it together, Israel. We gotta get it together. Can you just imagine how stupid and idiotic we're looking in the eyes of the Most High? I'm gonna change gears a bit here because I wanted to talk about this lie that we're gonna be having slaves in the kingdom of heaven. Now, I'm not saying that we won't have slaves, but that's only during the thousand year reign of Hamashiach. And after that, every heathen on earth will be destroyed in the lake of fire, which is the second death. The first death was when the God of Israel drowned the whole earth with water besides Noah's family. And the second death is gonna be when he's gonna burn the whole earth with fire. We will not have any slaves in the kingdom of heaven because there will be no more heathens left after the thousand year reign of Hamashiach. He's gonna burn up everybody in the lake of fire, just like he drowned everyone with water in the beginning. Let me prove this through the scriptures. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20 and we're gonna read verses one through nine. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now during this time of a thousand years, this is going to be the reign of the Hamashiach. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he shall deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Right, so after a thousand years, Satan is going to be loosed for a little season. And this is going to be the time that he's going to use to stir up the war, the battle of Jehoshaphat. Verse four, and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh and for the word of God and which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay, so I want you to understand, Israel, that they are going to be reigning with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. So in other words, the first resurrection is only going to be considering the 144,000. Those are gonna be the kings and the rulers of Israel. That's is gonna reign with the Lord for a thousand years. Right? And it says, this is the first resurrection. Verse six, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection because they have already received their spiritual bodies. On the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So we're just telling you that these guys that are gonna be raised up in the first resurrection, the 144,000, they have nothing to worry about during the second death, which is the lake of fire, because they've already received their spiritual bodies and have their spot reserved in the kingdom. Verse seven, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, and gather them together the to battle, the number of whom as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Now we can go through other precepts and we can see that this is the fire that's going to be burning everyone. This has absolutely nothing to do with nuclear destruction. Hamashiach will be ruling over the whole earth from the land of Israel. We will be taking slaves from the other lands. To prove that, let's go to Joel chapter three, verses four through 17. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Now these are two ancient Hamite nations. And all the coasts of Palestine, will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, would I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem ye have sold to the Grecians. And the Grecians are the Edomites. 
that ye might remove them far from their border. Which is the exact same thing that they happened. We were sold from the west coast of Africa and brought to the North Americas, far away from our border. Behold, I will rise them out of their place whether ye have sold them. And I will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah. And they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for the Lord has spoken it. So in other words, we're going to be slave trading when Yahawashai comes back and he rules for a thousand years. We're going to be doing the same thing that they did to us. We're going to be doing it right back to them. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I am strong. Now this is during the time of the slavery of the heathens. During the time of the thousand year reign of Hamashiach. But they're going to get it in their mind. After the thousand years are up, Satan is going to be loose for a short season to convince these heathen to once again to rise up. They're going to be mad. They're going to buck. They're not going to want to be slaves. They're going to buck against the Lord. Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. So the Lord's going to rain down fire, destroy all the heathens, and there will be no more heathens left to be able to pass through the city of Jerusalem after the kingdom of heaven comes. Now let's get this last scripture. This should solidify the absolute fact that at the end, the heathens will not be allowed in the kingdom of heaven because the whole earth will be nothing but Israel. The book of Revelation chapter 21, verse 24 through 27. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Verse 25. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. For there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life, which we know that in the kingdom of heaven there are twelve gates. And at those twelve gates we have twelve angels. And along with that, we have the names of the children of Israel written on each individual gate that they will go through. So when these Israelites from these other nations, which are also described as other tribes, they will be coming to their own designated gate from whichever their land that they're occupying upon the earth. And that's when they will be bringing their glory and honor into the Lord. It's quite simple. At the end, it will be nothing but Israel serving the Lord. All heathens will be destroyed. You will have no heathens only for the thousand year reign of the Hamashiach. That will be the only time that we'll be having heathens. Shabbat Shalom. Yo fam, Shalom, Shalom, it's your brother Icon. Ah, let's get it. Man, let's get on these law sessions and commandments and I'm trying to get a body. Man, hey, do it. I'm going to ride till I die or the kingdom rise. I'm trying to float up in the sky with you, how it Lord, save me for you burn them with the flames of fire. Destroy the heathen, all places to the most high. I burnt my hand on the stove up in hell's kitchen. Lord, no, I know these Israelites don't listen. I'm on a mission to fight against the son of perdition. Battle wickedness, slay scoffers.